demonstrate and share with you tips, tricks, and strategies as to how to use our new walking pads for using with a high-low desk or an adjustable desk. Um, we just introduced these treadmills to our lineup with Life Pro last week. Um, you can buy each one of these treadmills on Amazon. They are not available on the LifePro website. So uh, make sure that you connect with Amazon. Um, I'm gonna be featuring the OmniFit TriMotion treadmill, which is a regular um, treadmill that can be converted to a walking pad, which I'm gonna show you how to do here in just a moment. And then I'm gonna start showing uh, the demonstration here using our new FlexiFit walking pad. Um, the desk that I have here is, is high-low. Um, so you can start at a, at a low seated position to a standing position. And so I wanna show you just some uh, strategies or some things to consider if you're using one of our walking pads or the treadmill that converts to a walking pad um, at home or in your office space in order to get um, more physical activity, less stagnation, less sitting, more circulation in, um, in your extremities as you're working. So without further ado, um, we have talked about how to, um, you know, uh, how, how the different treadmills work. But what I want to want to do want to show you um, the flexi fit that I have directly here underneath of my desk. Um, it has got uh, a max user capacity of 198 pounds. It is 15 and a half inches wide by almost 40 inches long, runs up to a 3.8 mile per hour speed rate and starts at 0.6. So just wanna make sure that you remember as you start using either one of these uh, walking pads that you're only gonna max out your pace at 3.8 miles per hour, which is a very fast paced walk. Um, start lower on the air of caution. They're always gonna start by default at 0.6 and then you can use the remote in order to increase that intensity as you feel comfortable, okay? So each one of these has um, a metrics computer. The OmniFit uh, TriMotion has a computer up top when you're using it with the media pad, and the FlexiFit has the metric down low. You're not going to have to point down underneath in order to use the remote. You can use the remote as it comes here directed. Um, I'm going to bring this up close in person so that you can see it, okay? So on the remote, we have our start button up top, our stop button at the bottom, our increase and decrease speed, okay? Um, the FlexiFit pad does not, does not have an emergency button to pull on. So if you want to stop using um, the walking pad, you have to push the stop button on the remote. On the OmniFit TriMotion treadmill, it does have an emergency stop button, but I'm gonna tell you, if you're walking really, really fast and you go to pull that stop, it is gonna stop immediately whether you're ready for it to stop or not. So do err to the side of caution. It does have a start stop button on the control panel. So if you don't want to use the remote in order to turn the unit down or turn it off, and you don't want to come to an abrupt emergency stop, you can use the start stop button in order to decelerate the belt before you're, fin before you're finished, okay? Now, as you can see here at my high-low desk, um, I am positioned so that I am naturally able to type on my iPad here with the keyboard. I can bring this up a little bit higher if I feel a little bit, oh, I guess it would, it would help if I plug that in for you. There we go. So let's make sure we got that underway. I got everything else underway. Let's make sure we got power for the high-low desk. Okay, here we go. There we go. Okay, and so if I want to have my my workspace closer to me um, you can work with your high low desk so that you're not having to look forward and lean down so we want to make sure when we are walking when we're working um, with our high low power table that we're not rounding like this because this is going to cause some low back pain over time you want to be nice and tall with your arms naturally in front of you okay so if you're rounding forward while you're walking okay not good positioning back here or through here. We wanna make sure we're nice and tall, okay? And you wanna make sure that your tushy is more tucked under versus away. So tuck under versus this way, okay? I wore the red pants so that you could see the difference here. <laughs> so you're gonna see I have orange pieces of tape here, okay? Hard to see from a distance, but I have taken a special type of tape that does not leave a residue and I have spaced it about 15 inches wide so that I can 
give myself an idea of how far apart away I am from the, the width of the treadmill so that I don't happen to track off and trip off the edge of the treadmill. So I'm gonna encourage you to do the same thing just so you can get an idea of where your spacing is so that you don't get yourself into a bind when it comes to knowing where the treadmill is and where the walking pad is in proportion to your workspace. Um, I'm gonna take you a little bit closer here so that you can see this because uh, I want you to be able to understand where I'm coming from here. So if you can see there, you can see the orange strips that I've used to outline and you can see I've done that on both sides of the workspace so that I know how wide the walking pad is in proportion to my workspace. Really important as you get used to that so that you don't end up in tripping, not realizing where um, your footing is because it's easy to get distracted if you're keeping your eyes on your focal point. Um, and we don't want to have to look down in order to make sure that we're actually in positioning. So be really careful with doing that, okay? Um, now, if you go to your user manual, the user manual is gonna tell you to stand on the edges of the walking pad or the treadmill, push start, and then let the belt roll, okay? I'm gonna encourage you to go a different route because the rails for the flexi fit walking pad are not wide enough for your whole foot to position on the edges from a safety standpoint. So you're more likely to roll your ankles off the treadmill, which is an injury waiting to happen. So let's not do that. Um, if you're using the OmniFit Tri-Motion, these rails are a little bit wider and have some traction to them. But if your belt is running and it's getting caught on your shoe, that's not gonna be very helpful in the grand scheme of things. So I just wanna make sure that we are erring to the side of caution and focusing more on uh, getting the belt moving with you standing on it first, because it starts at such a very slow pace that you don't have to worry about it getting away from you. I'm gonna bring you a little bit closer, now that you have seen my setup here, I'm gonna bring you a little bit closer so that you can actually see everything happening in action. So bear with me here as I bring you along and you'll be able to see everything happening a little more free. There we go. And we're gonna lower the table here for just a second. Whoop, that's the wrong way. Actually, that worked out just fine. Okay, so you'll be able to see all this happening a little bit closer, almost a little bit closer. Okay, bear with me here. We're gonna adjust this table. I've got a high-low table here. Um, not power operated, manual operated with my body weight. There we go. Okay, now we can see Amber better. Here we go. Okay, so if I start, <laughs> we're getting there, right? <laughs> we're getting there. I'm glad to see you guys are joining. Okay. I think, there we go. I don't want to chop my head off because I love seeing all of you guys. So um, as we are getting comfortable here, like I said, my treadmill here, my walking pad has not started. Um, I have my orange lines here so that I can get a good idea of actually where I'm at in proportion to this amazing space to work with. Um, and I've got all of my things sitting out in arm's reach. So I'm going to go ahead and push play. And I'm standing here. It's going to give you a five-second countdown for the flexi fit. Okay. You might position your hands on the surface. Whoops. It's supposed to start. Now we're moving. Okay. So just um, if you need to for balance, just start with your hands in positioning here so that you feel safe and can get a pattern of movement motion going. Then you can use your remote. You don't even have to point it to it. And it was increasing. I'm going to increase it to about two and a half. This right here is a pretty comfortable pace for me to be able to sit. And I can actually still write things down. I'm going to actually demonstrate that for you. And... You're, I'll show it to you up close in person. It's just a little post-it that says you are awesome, but um, it doesn't, 
it doesn't make my penmanship any less, but I'm staying in line because I have these lines here as trackers so that I don't try and shift to one side or the other, because if you shift, you fall off the edge of the walking pad, okay? Um, so when we are working on getting, see, I almost got too excited and watched too, too far forward there. So that being said, I got plenty of room behind me. If you need to adjust the distance of your walking pad forward to backward, okay, you can do that. These have wheels, so it's really, really easy. Um, if you decide to get off and start over, make sure that you start from a very, very low speed, okay? Actually, I would start over. So we're going to push stop. I'm going to get back on, and we're going to give this another test run and see if that's a more comfortable position. And then what I would recommend you do, I'll show you this here in just a second. So we're walking very slowly again. And now we're going to pick up the piece to about a 2.5. So I'm at a 2.5 here. Yes, I got plenty of room behind me. I'm five foot four, five foot five, somewhere in there. Um, I got plenty of room to step in front of me, and I'm not running out of belt behind me. So this is a good spacing for me. When you find that spacing, get yourself a piece of tape and put it on the floor underneath of your desk so that you know where the treadmill or the walking pad should be positioned every single time that you approach your, your desk, okay? And that way, because once your body gets used to a natural gait pattern, it gets used to working at a regular pace, it just becomes more automatic to where you can be more hands-free and doing your thing. But until you get used to that, I mean, you wanna make sure that you're positioning yourself in the same general location because your stride distance, um, the step, the distance between step to step is gonna be very consistent as you get comfortable with the speed, okay? Again, I'm running at 2.5 right now, and this is a comfortable pace for me being about five, four, five foot four and a half. We'll just give me five foot four and a half. Um, and it starts at 0. 0.6, so it's from a safety parameter. Um, you don't have to worry about whether you have to start out too fast, because it's, it's slow enough you can get comfortable, okay? Um, of course, again, you can kind of work with the height of your desk as it, as it works best for you. If you want to be more up, up top, where you're not doing so much typing, but doing more writing, whoops, there went my ink pen, where you're doing more writing, step off. If you are gutsy enough to try this, I'm telling you, just to make sure you're careful, if you're gutsy enough to try to get back on it, just make sure that you're using safety as top priority as you get used to getting on and off without it stopping, okay? If you're not used to that, don't try it at home, friends, until you've had a chance to work with it a little bit at a slower pace, okay? Um, but if you are wanting to rest your forearms on here, this is great. So I'm still walking, still moving. My body's stretching out, and I'm still able to write and do good penmanship. So just stepped off. There it is. Good penmanship. Yay, not shaky, shaky. Okay, walking back on. Again, um, do that at your own risk. Make sure that you feel safe and stable. Otherwise, use the remote, stop the treadmill or the walking pad, get on, restart, ramp up the speed. And again, if you uh, go less, so we're just gonna go down to 1.5. This is super slow, okay? So if you have to worry about more about um, typing, or fine, finer penmanship, you can go as slow as you want to go, but it keeps blood uh, circulating in the lower extremity. It keeps your lymphatic lines opened up. Uh, it allows you to keep your back nice and loose, allows you to get in some extra steps. Every time you make contact with the ground, we're generating vibration to our bones and to our connective tissue, which therefore allows the body to kind of restore and hormonally release the hormones that are making us happy and it keeps us awake. So, um, you know, walking while working, if you have the resources to do that, are a great thing. This is a little too slow for my liking, 1.6. So let's knock it up a notch to 2.0, a little 2.0 version, right? Now, what I do not recommend you do, okay? What I do not recommend that you do is get yourself some hand weights and walk with your desk, with the slow 
uh, walking pad swinging the hand weights because it's already hard enough to balance with the desk and with your tasks. Um, so if you choose to use the hand weights on the regular treadmill and not the walking pad with a desk, um, feel free to give that a try. Uh, it is another way that you can get arms in motion. But remember, when your arms are in motion, they're going to synchronize with your legs in a, a, a very specific gait pattern. When you have your hands fixed, okay, your hips and your back and your legs have to work a lot harder because they're used to moving in synchrony with the arms. So if you should develop some uncomfortable um, aches and pains in your back or in your hips, it's because your arms are not doing enough of the work and your lower body is having to do a lot more work. So make sure you're trying to balance out. Um, if your hands are not in motion while you're working, make sure that you're not doing too much walking because that can create a bad, uh, dis it can create a dysfunctional pattern over time in which you have more problems in your back and in your hips because the back and the hips are supposed to move together with the next shoulder and the arms. So when one part of the body is fixed, not moving, and the rest of the body has to move more, it can create a natural imbalance over time, and that eventually will catch up with you. So make sure that you're staying loose and that you're keeping everything moving freely, all right? So there's that little demonstration. Um, I would like to share with you um, this other walking pad right here, which is a treadmill that converts into a walking pad. Um, the way that I have it set up right now is it's actually set up to be a treadmill with a media pad, okay? So we're gonna slide you on over here and you can see this really cool treadmill in motion. Now, this one does have an emergency key. I choose not to wear it because I think it gets in the way. So I'm just gonna leave it there. It does have an iPad or a tablet ledge. It does have a remote, but it also works from up top here, okay? And if you don't turn it on, every it'll automatically turn off after three minutes. Um, it's, it's built and programmed to turn itself off if you don't use it with a three minute time range. I'm gonna take my regular iPad here and I can just position it right here. It has um, a little, it has little clips that keep it from falling off the edge. And then it's got a, an adjustable mount up top if you don't have your own keyboard with your iPad. So you can use your iPad or um, your whatever tablet device you have. It has a little ledge in here so you don't have to have a keyboard associated with it unless you choose to. And again, on this one, the way that this one is set up, this one can actually go up to seven and a half miles an hour with everything set up as it is. Um, this one actually adjusts forward to backward, and that happens down here at the bottom. So if I loosen it up, it actually will shift forward and backward, okay? You wanna make sure if you're walking and using this as a walking pad with this media tray up, that you have it positioned as far forward as you can. Um, it has a little bitty bottle holder right here on top, so we can use that if we choose to. Okay, um, and again, um, I, if I go into program mode, this one also has several preset programs. So you can choose among the 12 preset programs for a type of workout. Um, it's got three different training modes. So if you're trying to establish goals, um, and then it's, at, like I said, if you want to use it specific as a walking pad underneath your desk, I'll show you how to convert that and how to shift, shift it over um, so that you can use it for that. This one also does have, um, different settings that you can manually adjust the height. So this tray actually adjusts up and down. For those of you that want to not look down and you want your screen right in front of you, okay? If you're watching a movie and you don't wanna look down because ergonomically speaking, that's not a good thing, then you can actually have this positioned up higher so that you're not leaning forward in order to look down. So really, really cool treadmill. Um, I'm, I'm liking this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started here and I'm just gonna go um, into regular manual mode. It's giving me a three second countdown and then it's gonna go ahead and start moving the belt, okay? This one does have a quick speed button so that if I push the quick speed button, right now it's at 0.5. Um, if, I'm sorry, yes, it's at 0.5. So if I go to uh, push the speed button, it goes automatically to two miles an hour 
and then four miles an hour and six miles an hour each time you tap it. So you have to tap it each time in order to use it at two, four, and six. Um, we're just gonna stay right here at two. And if I'm going to turn on a movie, okay, then we'll be able to watch a movie if we really want to. And I'm gonna make sure that I'm disconnected from on here from my AirPods so we don't have sound bouncing back and forth. But I can hang out right here and watch a movie. I can use, this is uh, stable enough as a hand handrail if you want to use it to hold on for balance reasons. But just remember, if you do affix your hands, your upper body is not rotating and moving as it's supposed to when you're in motion with the legs, then it makes it a lot harder on your hips and your lower body. So make sure that you're getting a little bit of motion going, a little bit of upper body rotation with your legs moving so that you don't develop an imbalance in your spinal stabilizers or in your hips, okay? So as we are moving here. Now, um, going at four, it's gonna be a much faster pace. And remember, the walking pads, they stop at 3.8. So this is a really fast pace. If you choose that you wanna stay hands in position and so you get used to the stride difference in your legs, step by step, and then pick up the pace with your arms, you can. It's really hard to work with your arms up top. So I'm going to adjust. And I just knocked it back to two. And then it also has a speed up, speed down button. So if I wanna drop it down back to 0.5, so that I can be really slow and I can adjust this tray height to a little lower. What that's gonna do is it's gonna give me the freedom to move my arms at a faster pace, but I'm not gonna be able to watch my movie. So just make sure that you're using safety as number one precaution, okay? We're gonna push the stop button, comes to a complete stop, and I'm gonna show you how to convert this so that you can experience. So we pull the emergency key and this will make noise until you convert it. There is a red gripper on the keypad here on the media tray that lists the tray off, okay? So we can take the tray off and then from here, these handles fold in. We're gonna loosen this up and we're gonna lay it flat. And now that beeping goes away because now it is in walking pad position. You're gonna go back down here, lock it in. Should be, yes, now we're locked in. Okay, I'm gonna move this one out of the way and slide the other one in. These all have wheels on them, so they're super easy, user-friendly to move around. One another, uh, another one of Life Pro's great inventions that makes it easier and portable for different features. And again, super easy to lift, reposition, turn it into an actual walking pad. And just remember, like I said before, um, the, the only challenge you gotta remember, as you convert this to a walking pad, on the back end of this, because you have folded the lever down, if you should step off the back, you are no longer making contact with the ground. You're actually making contact with that handle, which can be a bit of a tripping hazard. So just make sure you're using extra caution when you are using your pad or using your unit as a walking pad. Okay, and you can, you can see in here that now the metrics are showing up, the speed is showing up at the bottom as opposed to the tray at the top, we're working from the bottom, okay? Now, as you saw earlier, um, I've got tape here so I can see kind of where my boundaries are. And what you can do is take like um, floor marking tape or light level mark uh, marking tape for like um, painter's tape. This is gaff, this is pro gaff, uh, gaffner tape so it doesn't leave a mark on carpet but we're gonna take it and we're gonna put it down here so that I know that that's about where my walking pad needs to be each time I move it so that I know that I'm consistently 
positioning myself in the same place every time. My body can get used to that, and it becomes an automatic pattern over time. Okay, now this one has a little wristbound remote control. And so I'm going to go back to showing you all this good stuff. Got to have a little drink of water here. I hope you guys are all having a great day. Um, we've got the lovely holiday coming up tomorrow, Valentine's Day. So if you need an idea for your loved one or somebody that means a lot to you, can't go wrong with the walking pad. Um, and again, this little media tray, um, it is can be stowed, stored, kind of tucked away so it's out of the way. Um, I'm just going to lay it right there. And so here's my remote. Um, show this to you up close. And again, when we're in walking pad mode, um, you're only going to see it starting at 0.6, and it's going to go only to a 3.8, so it's not going to go super fast. And um, so there's there's the, the buttons. So our P button is our pre-program settings, and like I said, it has 12 preset programs if you are in the treadmill mode. So when the bar is up and you have the, the tray or if you choose just to use the, the handles, um, you'll have access to those 12. That's when you have to have the emergency key in order to use it. But when the lever is all the way down at the very end, um, you are just gonna push the on off button, which is this green button, the little stop button, which is the red, and the plus and the minus. Those are the only buttons you're gonna need for, for using it as a walking pad. So um, we're going to go ahead and push start. It's a three-second countdown, and it's automatically going to start moving, okay? And it's starting at 0.5, so again, really slow, okay? The cool part about the OmniFit TriMotion treadmill is that this one has a max capacity of 220 pounds. The whole weight of this treadmill, it's an actual treadmill that we're using as a walking pad right now. The whole weight of the treadmill is 73 pounds, so not easy to just pick up and move. That's why it's got wheels on it. And if you're using it as a treadmill, it maxes out at over seven miles an hour, but its low level is 0.5. So I'm going to go up to two. It's a comfortable pace for me. And this isn't bad where I have it positioned, but I've got plenty of room behind me, and um, it's a little, little too far away. So I'm going to slide, slide this forward just a little bitty bit. And again, we're just we're going very slow. And this one has a wider base of support, so you can get back on and get comfortable with the pace. But again, if you choose not to stop it, get on, get off. With the belt still running, just use extra caution. We don't want you to slip and fall. If it's easier for you to just push that stop button, just push the stop button, and it stops. You can get off and you can adjust it, okay? And then once you get comfortable with it, you can stand back on it, push the start button, three second countdown before the belt goes to move, and it's gonna move at a very slow pace of 0.5. So as you get comfortable knowing that you're stable, then you can go ahead and speed on up. And you don't have to look down, but I'm curious to see what the number is. So there's two, 2.0. Just keep your handy remote in an area that you can find it if you don't want to actually wear it, okay? And again, so when you're using the high-low desk, if you are wanting to work more with natural posture, using your hands, writing things down, reading, just remember, the lower the desk, the more you have to bend forward. So we don't want to get into the habit of leaning forward. We want to be nice and tall, okay? That's what's gonna help with sciatica. That's what's going to help with low back pain. That's what's gonna keep the hip flexors happy uh, because when we sit, our hip flexors are at their shortest. Our deep abdominal stabilizers are turned off. Uh, we have less oxygen, 30% less oxygen to the brain and the spinal cord when we are in a seated, rounded position trying to do our work, okay? So being nice and tall, and having everything close to you makes it a little bit more metabolically happy for our happy hormones to release, for circulation to improve, digestion um, is, is more um, efficient, and we just feel better when we're moving. So 
This is allowing us a wide variability of speed and options for being able to stay active at work without being distracted at work. So I get my computer out here in front of me. This is too high for me to use my computer. So we're gonna drop it down a notch. And if your desk is like mine, I've got three memory settings on mine that I can set the memory. So you might have a memory setting just for computer time. You might have a setting for writing time. And you might have a setting for when you're actually seated. So um, it's convenient when you know the right optimal height. But again, we just want to make sure that we're ergonomically sound, that we're not rounding, that we're nice and tall. We're able to lengthen out. We're able to keep our arms nice and flush. Um, this is actually too far away for me. And this is about right. This right here is perfect for me to be able to type without me like being T-Rex arms. Okay. So, and again, I've got my barriers here. So I know exactly where I'm at in line with the, with the walking pad so that I don't get tripped up. And everything's happy and calm. Uh, I feel safe. So the most important thing is to remember that you feel safe. All right. So um, this, this uh, tri motion, the OmniFit tri motion treadmill has speakers. It's got Bluetooth features. So if you're wanting to synchronize up to one of our apps, KinoMap, Zwift, um, AllSport, Fit me. Um, you, I don't know if it uh, attaches to the Apple Watch, but you can try. Um, but as a walking pad, you can't go any faster than 3.5 miles an hour. I'm at two right now, which is fast enough for me to be comfortable. Um, and again, if you decide that you're wanting to train for a couch to 5K, um, you can convert this back to a treadmill and go for a run really, really fast. So for $439.99, you can get a lot of bang for the buck from the convenience at home or your office space by using this as a walking pad and a full-size treadmill uh, with full features, 12 preset programs, three training modes for establishing goals, and a running surface of 40, 41.3 by 17.3. So this one I'm on right now is two inches wider than the Flex FlexiFit, okay? All right, so let me show you here right quick. We're gonna stop comes to a halt, okay? So I'm going to unplug it first. I'm gonna move it over here to the side and convert it back to a regular treadmill. And you're gonna see how fast and easy that is. And that way, when you're ready to go to Amazon to order your treadmill, you are able to come back and watch this video all over again and see how easy and convenient it is to switch back and forth. Okay, so there's that. We're gonna go ahead and plug it back in. See if I can do that right, there we go. You can hear it turning on. We're gonna loosen up the rail. Whoop, there we go. Set it up, lock it in. So when it's in line, it's locked in. We're gonna fold out these handles we're going to clip this on just like that so it's locked in security key goes in so it's not being loud now we use this to operate it we have our remote and we're ready for action and now we can use our pre-gram preset program mode or we can use our speed up speed down button and there you have it. And that, my friends, is how easy it is to get on and get off the new OmniFit Trimotion treadmill. So I hope that answers any kind of interest you might have with our new walking pads and how to use it with the high-low desk. Uh, I think it's a great opportunity for you to stay moving. Uh, it takes a very little space you can multitask at home and be able to do the things that you love to do while staying active maximizing your time and being the best version of yourself possible. So on behalf of Life Pro and here uh, at Kivik Kinetic Solutions, thank you so much for your time and watching and learning about walking pads and high-low desks. And we'll look forward to seeing you again next week and in, in, in whatever topic that you are interested in. So if you are interested in other uh, videos, 
don't forget to catch Roseanne and Debbie as they offer uh, different areas with our other types of equipment and how you can do workouts from the convenience at home as well for free. So have a great week and I'll catch up with you next time. Thanks so much.